Hello and welcome. This is St Wilfrid's Cowplain, Church Online. Today we are looking at a well-known but, well if I'm honest, incredible story about Jesus. It's called the Transfiguration. It's when he climbed a mountain with some of his disciples. He met with God and some Old Testament characters. And he turned whiter than white. We'll be reading this story later in the service from Mark's Gospel. But as we start, let's pray together. God of our days and years, we give this time to you. Make us more like Jesus each day, so that our lives may glorify you. Amen. We're going to sing our first song now, 10,000 Reasons. And a big thank you to our friends at St Paul's Salisbury Green for letting us use their video.
St. Paul says, be imitators of God, love as Christ loved. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit. Put away all anger and bitterness, all slander and malice. So let us confess our sins to God, who forgives us in Christ. Father, we have sinned against heaven and against you. We are not worthy to be called your children we turn to you again. Have mercy on us. Bring us back to yourself as those who once were dead, but now have life through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God, who sent his Son into the world to save sinners, bring you his pardon and peace, now and forever. Amen. Let's pray together today's special prayer. Holy God, you know the disorder of our sinful lives. Set straight our crooked hearts and bend our wills to love your goodness and your glory. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And let's now declare our faith. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith 
and fills us with his love. We believe in God, the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.
Today's Bible reading is read by Eve. Katie and Ian will then bring us their thoughts and reflections. Today's reading is taken from Mark chapter 9, verses 2 to 13. The Transfiguration. After six days, Jesus took Peter, James and John with him and led them up a high mountain where they were all alone. There he was transfigured by, before them. His clothes became dazzling white, whiter than anyone in the world could bleach them. And there appeared before them Elijah, Moses, they were talking with Jesus. Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say. They were so frightened. Then a cloud appeared and enveloped them, and a voice came from the cloud. This is my son, whom I love. Listen to him. Suddenly, they, were look, they looked around. They no longer saw anyone and that, except Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus gave them orders not to tell anyone what they had been up to, seen the Son of Man and risen from the dead. They kept the matter to themselves, discussing what rising from the dead meant. And they asked him, why do the teachers of the law say that Elijah must come first? Jesus said, to be sure, Elijah does come first and restores all things. Why then is it written that the Son of Man must suffer much and be rejected? But I tell you, Elijah has come, and they have done to him everything they wished, just as it is written about him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Mark 9, 2-13, Jesus whiter than white. When I read through the passage the first time, I didn't really understand it. And I wasn't sure what it was trying to tell me. So after a lot of thinking, I decided to look on Google to, and to have some help. It explained that the transfiguration of Jesus is a story told in the New Testament when Jesus is transfigured, which means he becomes radiant in the glory upon mountain. This is one of the greatest miracles of Jesus. It is a pivotal moment and, that, and this moment on the mountain is the point where human nature meets God with Jesus and herself as the bridge between heaven and earth. I take from this that by having a relationship with Jesus myself, by having faith and being a Christian, um, that it is my way of having that link to heaven. Today's theme is Jesus, whiter than white. Now that might seem a bit of an odd title to you. What do I mean by that? Well, what I don't mean is speaking of Jesus's ethnicity, his skin colour. Over the centuries, here in the West, there have been countless images of Jesus. Paintings, stained glass windows, all manner of different art. And many of them portray Jesus as white with Western facial features. But we really do not know what Jesus looked like. Now, it's probably a good thing that he lived many centuries before cameras, YouTube and Instagram. People could only see him in the flesh, exactly as he was. No Photoshop or airbrushing, and certainly no funny kitten filters. What we do know is that Jesus was a Jew from Israel, and his family were most certainly not Western. So it's far more likely that he looked like those from the Middle East than those from England. But that's really not what I mean about him being whiter than white. Now that's an expression we use all the time. We describe someone whose actions are honest and moral as being whiter than white. 
It means being above reproach, being totally trustworthy to do the right thing, not being susceptible to being bribed or swayed into bending rules for their own gain. Now, of course, I'm sure that Jesus was all those things. We know that he lived a perfect life. Unlike the rest of us, he never sinned. He always did what was right. He always obeyed his father. He never succumbed to temptation. But that only shows a small part of who Jesus was, or actually, as I should say, who Jesus is. And we see something of this in this remarkable story told by Mark in his gospel. Jesus takes his three closest disciples up the top of a mountain. Now that's not a particularly unusual thing for him to do. We often read of him getting away from the pressure, often climbing mountains to pray, to spend time with his father. And we know that Peter, James and John were his inner circle. Yes, Jesus did have favourites. Not because he didn't like the others or they weren't important to him, not because he didn't value them and love them and care for them, but he needed that small inner core, a team that he could be real with and go deeper with, those who, that he would prepare for the calling that he has for them. So Jesus takes them to the top of a mountain and there they were on their own. Then something rather unexpected happened. There Jesus was transfigured before them and we read his clothes became dazzling white whiter than anyone in the world could bleach them and there appeared before them Elijah and Moses who were talking with Jesus now I'm sure they were not expecting that to be transfigured means means being changed into something beautiful Jesus is transformed literally whiter than white but what about Elijah and Moses well, to the Jews, they were the best of the best. Moses, that great leader who led them out of Egypt. Elijah, the greatest of all the prophets, bringing God's word to them. So this is no ordinary event. And then if that's not enough, a cloud appeared and covered them. And a voice from the cloud said, this is my son whom I love. Listen to him. Actually, if I'm honest, I'm a bit sad that there was nobody there to film them. That would have made quite some YouTube video. Jesus is transfigured. As I say, that means to be changed into something great, something beautiful. Jesus is changed. He is whiter than white. And of course, he's there chatting to Moses and Elijah, both of whom are very, very dead. They're covered with this great cloud. That's when this voice speaks to them, this voice who is God. Not any old voice. This is quite some event, as I say. And it's not at all surprising that Peter blurts out. To be honest, I would have been completely frightened and scared myself. I'm sure most of us would say the same. Now, Mark places this story very carefully in his Gospel. We have seen Jesus perform a number of miracles. He's been speaking to the crowds, largely in parables. And of course, he's been teaching his disciples about who he is and what will happen. Just before the end of chapter eight, Peter has declared that Jesus is the Christ, the Messiah, the one sent by God. And then Jesus has spoken of his death and resurrection, both of which are to come. And Peter again, yes, it's always Peter, blurts out and rebukes him. So six days later, we see this incredible mountaintop experience. Jesus, whiter than white. Well, that's not just because he's good in himself. Yes, he's perfect, but he is also God. God who has come to earth as a human, just like you and me. But here we see that he isn't just like you and me. And that, I think, is for those of us with human-sized brains, a real problem. And we see it's a problem that Peter, James and John also experience. And certainly one that becomes a big problem for the Jewish leaders. Because what we have, on one hand, Jesus is fully human, 
100% so. We see that he lived a normal life, a life with all its stresses and strains, with all its wonders and joys. He felt emotion just as we do. When he cut himself, it hurt. And yes, the cross was excruciatingly painful, possibly the cruelest means of execution ever invented. And as we read through the gospel stories, many of them show that humanity. Jesus is portrayed as human, not an angel or a super spiritual being who kind of just levitates a bit above the ground. And he certainly didn't live with a halo around his head. But sometimes in the gospels, we get a glimpse of what it means for Jesus to be fully God, 100% so. And that's what we see here. Jesus is greater than any one of us. As you read through the Bible, both Old and New Testaments, he is there throughout. Jesus was there at creation. John tells us this at the start of his gospel. And Jesus will be there at the end of time. Just take a read of the last couple of chapters of Revelation if you need convincing. So here, on the top of the mountain, we see Jesus being shown to be the Son of God, shown that he is fully God. Now I have to say, it's quite a while since I did maths at school, but I do seem to remember that 100% of something is full, it's complete. So when Jonathan or Annabelle complete a Mario game, as they like to do, they get to 100%. Of course, when I try, I get nowhere near. But what I find so hard to get my head around is that at the same time, Jesus is 100% human and 100% God. When Jesus lived on earth, he chose to put aside some aspects of his divinity. We're told that he only did what he saw his father doing and that he did it inspired and empowered by the Holy Spirit. But I think there's a danger for us and that's that we only think of him as human because he calls us his friends. He relates to us because he's experienced what it means to be human like us. But the danger is that we can forget that he is also above us. And I'm sure that's part of the reason why we have this story in the Gospels. Now, of course, God could have caused anybody to be white. If you look in the Old Testament, we see it with Moses. When he went up a mountain to speak with God, sounds familiar, he came down and his face was white as white. But there's something else here, isn't there? It's that voice saying, this is my son whom I love. Listen to him. So I'm sure that part of the story is God actually speaking to Jesus. It's actually very similar to what happened at his baptism. But it's also here a command for those of us to hear God's voice. His command to listen to Jesus. When Jesus speaks, he isn't just speaking as a human being, as one of us. He speaks with God's authority. He does it, he can do it, because he is God, God's son. So there's a big challenge for us today. Do we let Jesus speak to us? And if we do, are we listening? Because when Jesus speaks to us, he's not just speaking as a friend. He's also speaking as God. Now we have an advantage over Peter and James and John because we've got the whole story of Jesus on earth. We know that he died on a cross. He rose again. He ascended to heaven and sent his Holy Spirit to empower his followers. So, what is Jesus saying to you? Jesus, the one we are called to worship through how we live as well as what we say. Jesus, the one who knows us better than we know, how, than we know ourselves because he made us in his image. Jesus, the one who lived a perfect life and died so that we might be forgiven, that we might know God, that we might also know eternal life. The entry point is knowing Jesus, worshipping him as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. So let's use this next song to do just that. And there's a truth here that when we worship Jesus, when we allow him into our lives, when we say yes to him, when we recognise who he is, when we let go of ourselves, he just has this knack 
of being all that we need him to be. This coming Wednesday is Ash Wednesday, the start of Lent. Lent is a time of penitence where we are encouraged to consider the wrong that we have done, how we have fallen short. That's why we are encouraged to fast, to pray and to take more time with God. Now this year, Covid means that things will be different, but different doesn't have to mean worse and I don't think it will be worse. So we are holding our Ash Wednesday service together with Heart Plain Church and it will be on Zoom at 7.30pm. We can't ash people in the usual way, but please do join us on Zoom and have a small glass of water with you. Our weekly email has the Zoom access details, so please get in touch if you don't have them. We are also asking everybody at St Wilfrid's to pray this Wednesday. Our church will be open all day. Elaine has written a wonderful prayer and reflection guide. It's on our website and linked from the weekly email. Kate from Heart Plain has written a weekly Lent study guide. It works equally well in small groups or on your own. And Jan has put together what I can only call a smorgasbord of Lent prayers and reflections. Do use them to inspire your praying through this season. But actually, that's not all. Because I'm really excited by what has been happening at Messy Church. 
St Wilfrid's, Hart Plain and Waterlooville Baptist Churches have joined together to bring the best of all our messy churches. Now I'm going to let Kate, Leslie and Amy explain what is happening throughout Lent. And I'm Reverend Kate from Heart Plain Church. We're here to talk to you about Lent. But what is Lent? Lent's the time when Christians prepare for Easter. Lent's the time between Pancake Day and Easter Day. That's more than six weeks! But don't worry. We've got lots of fun activities to help you keep busy as you count down to Easter. So every Wednesday we're going to have a story for you. On Thursday there's going to be a song. On Friday we're thinking about how to look after our planet. On every Saturday there's going to be something for the family to do together and on Sundays a creative way to pray. On Mondays we're thinking about how to be kind and on Tuesday we're going to be doing something art and craft. So, Amy, how's it all going to happen? So, to be able to see the videos, you will need to either have access to Facebook or YouTube. So, if you have access to Facebook, you'll be able to find the videos on the Messy Church Together page, which is the new page that we've started up. Or if you don't do Facebook and you like YouTube, you can find us on YouTube at Messy Church Together. Um, so it, they will both be on Facebook or YouTube. Um, we will also be putting them on our own church Facebook pages anyway. Um, so you should be able to find them. If you have any problems, then please get in touch with either uh, myself, Kate or Leslie, and we will try and find a way of you seeing them all. They are going to be fantastic and I really hope you enjoy them. So please try and join us every day as we journey through Lent with Messy Church together. Bye. Leslie will now lead us in our prayers. Good morning, everyone. Shall we pray together? Lord, it is good for us to be close to you and life-giving to listen to you. When there are so many distractions, please help us to focus on you. May we rest at times and just be glad, happy and content to be with you in your presence and in your love. Lord Jesus, you went with your disciples to the top of a high mountain. Thank you that we can be with you wherever we are and thank you for those special places where we feel closest to you. Lord, we read today that you were covered in cloud on the top of a mountain. We praise you for the beauty of your creation, for the joy of listening to bird songs, the feeling and sound of the wind and the rain, the sun and the clouds making patterns in the sky and the enjoyment of looking out over a view that extends for miles, taking in hills, the valleys and stretching to the sea. Lord, so many people are in difficult places right now. Thank you for those who are working so hard to make things better in these incredibly challenging times. We ask for your protection on all who put their own lives at risk every day to meet the needs of others. And we pray for those who find themselves in those difficult places today. Shall we spend a moment naming those? 
who need to be lifted out from a difficult place. Lord, we have named those known to us. There are so many more known to you. May they be filled with your peace and with your hope. And shall we say together the prayer that Jesus taught us? Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Oh,
Today is St Valentine's Day. Here at St Wilfrid's, we want everyone to know that you are loved. That's why we've put together a wonderful display of hearts in front of our church. Thank you to everyone who's made a heart and placed it on the front lawn or hung it on the tree or hedge. It's not too late to do so or to come and take a look. Here are some new photos of everyone's creativity. We're back for church online next Sunday at 10.45am. And as ever, you can watch all our services and other videos on Facebook and YouTube at any time. And please do invite your friends to join us. Do share our Facebook videos and posts and encourage people to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Don't forget morning prayer at 9.30am every weekday and the weekly Haven't Deanery prayer on Mondays for 15 minutes at 12.15. Both are on Zoom, so please get in touch if you need the logon details. We had a great meeting last week about Connect Groups and I know that lots of people are interested in joining a group or even in setting one up. We will be in touch about the new possibilities that are starting to come together. Wouldn't it be great if everyone who felt a part of St Wilfrid's was able to feel supported by a small group? It would be amazing if we each helped one another with what it means to be Jesus' disciples in 21st century Hampshire. And if we helped one another to share our faith, and lead others to follow Jesus as his disciples. That's our vision, and I hope you will want to be a part of it. As we come to the end of our service together, let's pray our prayer for growth. God of mission, who alone brings growth to your church, send your Holy Spirit to give vision to our planning, wisdom to our actions, and power to our witness. Help our church to grow in numbers, in spiritual commitment to you, and in service to our local community. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May Christ, who out of defeat brings new hope and a new future, fill you with his new life. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. And as ever, if you're watching us live, do join us now on Zoom for coffee. Father's side.